Well, 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 everybody. It's another wonderful day in the bluegrass. Thank you for joining me. Uh, Andrew Cooperwriter Show. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Cooperwriter, giving you a liberty perspective on politics in Kentucky. We got a lot of big stuff today. Obviously, well, not obviously, maybe you missed it. Uh, this past Friday, I announced I'm running for Kentucky State Treasurer. Going to talk about that. Roe v. Wade um, was, was, of course, overturned, which triggered Kentucky's abortion law. However, Kentucky courts have decided to step in and do exactly what the federal courts did that was so wrong 50 years ago and find some sort of way to stop that. And um, several states are sending out inflation relief checks, which tells me they don't understand what causes inflation in the first place. And of course, um, many, many people will be bought off with those checks when they really should be asking some deeper, deeper questions. So thank you guys once again so much for joining us. Please like, comment, share, share it, hit subscribe, right? That's how we get it out there. Tell people about us. If you're watching this on on Facebook or YouTube and you don't want to leave it open, you can catch this in the podcast form every Tuesday morning. Um, it's available on all major podcasting platforms. And then on Facebook and YouTube, it goes live at noon. Um, additionally, as well, on top of liking, comment, supporting us, you need to text the word LIBERTY to 33777. So pull out your phone, go over to the text, and text the word LIBERTY to 33777. It's how you join our action network. And we, 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 on top of telling you about events and things like that and, and, and keeping you in the know there, um, it is how we, we push on some very, very important issues, very important issues. So, uh, let's dig into it today. First, start off by, um, saying thank you guys for joining us. And yeah, so, uh, uh this past Friday here, July 1st, I announced that I'm running for Kentucky state treasurer. Um, you know, it, it, it wasn't something where when people asked me a month and a half or two ago after the state Senate race, they'd ask me, hey, you know, wh what are you going to do? I didn't know, right? Um, it wasn't like the day afterwards, I was like, yep, this is definitely what I need to run for. Uh, actually, I was I was just talking to some people, praying, discussing about what to do next. And, and a good number of people came to me and said, look, um, your message of conservative fiscal policy of liberty, of smaller government, larger freedoms, of, of fighting back on the corruption running rampant in our government is incredibly important. It needs to go elsewhere. And we really think you should run for Kentucky State Treasurer. Take a look at the race, dig into it, and let us know what you think. And so, you know, we did that. We started looking at some of the numbers, digging into it, and start praying about it, you know, and, and God works mysterious ways where one thing could lead to another, you know, Bevin being our governor, uh, only happened because McConnell spent so much time beating up on him, um, for the last, uh, for, while he was running against him during that primary. And so, yeah, we, we, we started looking at it, took a deep dive. We realized that everything that had been working against us before either would be working for us or maybe just be out of the way. And of course the role of the state treasurer is pretty much perfect for an individual like myself. Um, let's take a look at what straight, uh, state treasurer is. What do they do? Right? So the state treasurer is first and foremost, your watchdog over your tax dollars. So it ensures that your dollars are being spent in a way that's statutorily and constitutionally correct. I think, um, when you look at my track record over the last several years of fighting on just those issues, fighting to, to make government smaller, protecting constitutional rights, fighting on government overreach, uh, and, 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 and really drawing attention to that side of things. I certainly can't think of a person who's got a better track record of being willing to do that. Um, and, and being willing to hold true. If, if you're, if you're a Republican, if you're, if you're a conservative and you love Liberty, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. And, and being able to promulgate those financial policies, because that's really what it boils down to is, is the larger government gets, the more they spend, the more corruption runs rampant. And if we can push back about that, we can bring them in. And so when, when we look at the job, of what a state treasurer is, it's the watchdog for the taxpayers. 
and look at what's going on right now. We've got inflation record, high gas prices, nary to find a conservative fiscal thought sometimes. Even in our own state, we got a budget that's ever growing, um, that, that never seems to find a way to reduce. And, and so with all that going on, it, it's hard pressed to think of a more perfect time for a person with my kind of background to be able to push forward true conservative and liberty thoughts. And so, yeah, and, and look, you know, we can take a look at, at the mismanagement funds at all governments and how they've affected us. And, and it's important to have someone who feels that and also has the experience with that as a small business owner. You know, we employ uh, dozens of Kentuckians uh, across our companies. And, you know, I've, I've been in business for a while. Um, I've worked for myself for a while. And so being that way, um, we certainly have felt that experience of, of sacrificing blood, sweat, tears, treasure, time, time, so much time with your family you sacrifice in order to build up something, in order to build a better life for yourselves. And having somebody who's actually experienced that um, is fantastic. Now, also what the state treasurer does is um, they do sit on a lot of the pension boards and things like that. And, and you know, just because Andy Bashir has stopped talking about our $44 billion unfunded pension liability doesn't mean it's not still going on. Uh, it's a big problem. And it's actually a problem created by his father. See, what happened is, is his father decided he wanted to do all these liberal big funding projects, just like what we see the Biden administration is doing. And they were just counting on all this money flowing in. Economy's going great. I'm just going to spin, 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 blow more money into the system and spend. And then in this case, he was borrowing from our pension. See, in the state of Kentucky, we have a balanced budget amendment that requires that the state government cannot spend more money than it takes in. However, they play this accounting game where they do not consider their pension liabilities as a part of the balanced budget. So what he was able to do was he's able to borrow money essentially from the pensions, not paying in the liabilities they need to pay. And it was okay at the time because the economy was booming and the pension values were going up. But when recession hit and they couldn't make their payments into the system, and of course the stock market crashed, so the system wasn't earning as much, paying out those pension benefits became a real issue, and that liability continues, and that's going to come calling. We have this recession coming up, and, and having somebody that recognizes that, hey, pensions, it is a promise that we made to a person um, that was working for the government. They've paid into it. It's their money. When you look at the math behind how much they pay in and everything else, it boggles the mind how the pension system is even close to going broke. Uh, but that's what happens. Government can screw up everything. Um, and so, you know, we got to take a look at that too as well. And, and I think it's really about too of saying what kind of, of financial of, of fiscal policy do we want promulgated in the state? Do you want a fiscal policy that says, look, government isn't, isn't the solution, it's the problem. We need to get out of people's lives. We need to stop taking so much money from their pockets and we return that power to the household. I think those things are incredibly and incredibly uh, important. Now, the the liberals on the, the crazy leftists on the Twitters uh, have gotten real upset about me running, very upset. Um, and, and their go-to is to ask, well, what experience does Andrew have? Listen, our last two treasurers, one Republican, one Democrat, the Republicans termed out, it's an open seat. Uh, Allison Ball, she's termed out, open seat. Um, but the last two Republicans have both, uh, the last Republican had for eight years, Democrat, eight years, um, were both attorneys. Uh, Allison Ball was a personal injury attorney and then a prosecutor. And uh, Hollenbach, he was a private practice attorney. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean they weren't qualified or anything else at all. I mean, you know, a lot of people think Allison Ball's done a pretty good job at Treasure. So I'm not saying they're not qualified per se. I'm just pointing out the fact that I failed to see uh, how a, a business owner that actually employs people and understands how their financial decisions, the financial, how my financial decisions affect others because I employ people is somehow less qualification than uh, an attorney who hasn't yet experienced that most likely in their lives, or if they have their own private practice, that's great, but it's not quite the same, is it? Because you can be by yourself as an attorney and then you add on. We're not talking about these, these 
businesses where you're dealing with, you know, low skilled labor and general labor and then trying to promote people and, and, you know, really on that kind of scale of things. And so, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that, you know, they're going to reach around and grasp for any reason they can think of because they do not want a truly conservative fiscal policy to be catching ground in Kentucky because then all their little pet projects don't get as much funding and they start to go away. And so the leftists are going to reel and screech about it. Oh, I'm seeing things on Twitter like failed businessman. I don't know what they're talking about. Failed businessman. I keep reading it. I'm like, do they know my coffee shop's still open? Is that what they're referencing? Just my coffee shop? Do they know it's still open and still operates? I, I, I don't know quite what they're talking about there, but you know, Whatever they're gonna they're gonna run their mouths as they're going to do, and that's okay because that means we're over target, and that means we're gonna run a, a very strong race here. And and I am very, very excited about that. So what can we accomplish, right? What, what are some of the goals here? First, let's talk about the Second Amendment. So we've got this Senate, um, federal Senate, and I've talked about this in other podcasts, led by actually our own Senator Mitch McConnell, putting in place red flag gun laws, and and in prior con podcast, I talked about, you know, my objections to that. And additionally as well, um, when we talk about uh, the second amendment and talk about unconstitutional things, once again, the treasurer's job is to make sure your money is, is to speak up when your money's being spent on unconstitutional things. Well, you know, I think the second amendment does not give you the right to own a firearm. It gives the right, I'm sorry, it, you have that right already. You were born with that right. What the second amendment does is it limits the government's ability to actually take away your right. That's what it's about. And, and so, we, you know, I think that is an obviously constitutional protected right on the second amendment. And I think, um, and I definitely think uh, we can really push on that. Here's another big thing is these ESG scores. I guys, I truly believe ESG scores uh, might be the downfall of, our situation. It's, it's quite frankly, it's a type of, um, it's definitely a type of, you know, fascism per se, you know, M Mussolini said fascism should be called corporatism because really it's just government turning to private businesses, um, to do the things they can't. I mean, I'll give you the exact quote here. Um, but it is, you know, corporatism, sorry. Um, corporatism became, Quote of the day. Here we go. Fascism should be more importantly called corporatism because it's a merger of state and corporate power. So what the left does, and we've seen them do this over and over and over again, is when they can't get laws passed on their liberal thoughts, on their um, own policy beliefs, whether it's LGBTQ, you know, as we see all these corporations changing to rainbows and everything else, they can't get laws passed on that. So instead, they turn to corporations and they use um, corporations and, and they harass them basically into doing it. We've seen this reporters because corporations are afraid of bad press. And so, you know, these activist reporters will reach out to them. Of course, there's organizations that the left has set up that when you come in and you want to complain about something, they'll just call them a bunch of times and burning up their phones until they give in things like that to kind of shut them down. And the ultimate kind of coming together that is the ESG scores, which stands for economic, social, and governance scores, basically stating that, well, are they, are they, are they, are they woke enough? Um, are they, what is, what is their potential governance issues coming up? You know, um, are they, are they, are they green enough? So basically saying like, look, if you're not green and if you're not woke, you get a bad ESG score. And there's a lot of these major billions upon billions of dollars funds, including um, BlackRock, they're really engaging in these ESG scores. And that is something where we have got to be able to stand against. And, and as state treasurer, as sitting on those pension boards and as kind of helping direct some of those investments there, we can push back against those ESG scores because that is truly the left grabbing a hold of our corporations and, and, and moving past government and using these corporations to 
forced down their will in a way that was never, ever intended. Because let's keep in mind, too, that what this has done now in a normal world, you'd say, OK, well, they're private businesses. Let them do what they want. Yes, exactly. Let them do what they want. But the problem is, is that they've grabbed a hold of this looming and lumbering government to put in place regulations and laws and rules that make it impossible for people to compete with them. You know, and it makes it impossible for people to be able to hold corporations accountable when they do something wrong. I remember um, I was talking to somebody about, we were talking about the EPA and they were talking about how, you know, the EPA is necessary. We got to regulate the, the environment and everything else. I said, well, hold on, hold on, hold on here. See, when you destroy somebody's water supply, they would normally have cause for just action. We saw this in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, there was a mine that um, had poisoned the water out in Eastern Kentucky. It's still got issues out there in Eastern Kentucky with the water. And, and so those people had just caused an action to sue that mining company. And they did. But then the government stepped in and said, well, hold on here. Hold on here. We can't, we can't have this. And the company declares bankruptcy and the government steps in to stop the, the people from being able to claim their damages. And now their water's damaged. They got damages. And what happened? And, and where's the EPA? Where's all these government organizations for you when large corporations like that company was able to grab a hold of it and use it to protect itself from actual liabilities they owed? That isn't free market. That has been something since this country's founding that you had the right to do is when a company or an individual does damages against you, you're able to sue them for those damages. Having government come in and protect them, that is the opposite of a free market. But those are the kinds of things these corporations get these government actors to do to defend them. And it locks out these small businesses or other businesses from rising up and competing against them. And so we've got this monopoly that in, in a lot of industries that have been created by these corporations using corruption in the government. Once again, why we want to crush corruption, why we want to get rid of it is because we want a free and open market, free of government sticking their fingers in there. I mean, we've seen how much the, the Democrats have screwed us up at a national federal level by just sticking their fingers and touching everything. Just stop touching it. Like literally all Biden had to do when he came out was just not touch anything. Just don't touch it and let it go. You've done shut it down for so long. It'd be okay on its own, but no, they couldn't do it. They had to half open. They had to have all their, their lockdowns and mandates and masking. And, and, and they had to, they had to have quarantining and everything else all around the world because they didn't just learn their lesson. And then it, and then it messes everything up. And then they pump all this money out and they print all this money and they blow it into the system. And then a massive inflation and fuel prices because Biden can't keep pumping domestically. And, and, and he failed on his Afghanistan pullout, which led to Russia invading Ukraine. You cannot convince me it didn't. And I know I'm ranting, but follow me here. And all these things of just Biden sucking and the federal government sucking at its job. And more importantly, the fact that we have allowed so few people to have so much power over our lives that it can destroy them. That's the issue. And these, these ESG scores is just a way that these large leftist management funds like BlackRock are able to come in and force their will onto more corporations. Tesla has recently said, look, we're not getting involved in this. And this is a big deal. These ESG scores, it's a big deal. It's something we got to stand against, right? Inflation, gas prices. How can we help there? Well, ensuring that we're promulgating uh, um, fiscal policies that, that forward uh, domestic drilling so we can be secure in our own fuel uh, supplies, uh, inflation by recognizing how not to blow out the funds. We'll talk here later on about inflation relief checks some states are putting out. Look, you know, the state treasurer is a, can be essentially a spokesperson for good conservative fiscal policies if it's put forward that way. And, and we can get other states on board too as well. We can get other states on board with saying, let's audit the Fed. I mean, look at what the Fed is doing. The, this federal government has the, the Fed itself, sorry, the Federal Reserve, the bank there, the central bank has all this power over, and they're not elected. 
And they're like, hey, we're going to raise interest rates because we think we need to get down to this inflation rate. Our goal inflation rate is 2%. So if it's below 2%, they then will lower rates a lot more in order to get inflation rate up there because they think 2% is the key inflation rate because they're Keynesian economics. And they believe that if your money just sits in account, if you take your money and just sit in account, you should be punished for that. So if you do that, you're going to lose 2% of your money every year because if you're not investing it, you're losing it to inflation because that's what inflation is. You're losing your money. You're losing 2% every year. And so in that same way, in that same way, this, this, this federal reserve comes in and then sets these fiscal policies that make no sense. And they do it unilaterally without being elected at all. And so I think that is really important as we, as, as, as state treasurers, we can say, Hey, let's, let's hold the fed accountable. Let's audit it. Let's look at what we can do here that, that so much power is concentrated in so few hands. Additionally as well, we can take one big huge step on abortion in this office as well at state treasurer. And this is right here. So Roe v. Wade obviously was overturned. And we'll talk here in a second about uh, Mitch Perry, judge up in Louisville, overturning our trigger law. But, but I think what is key here to know is that there's all these private companies that have decided to come out. And I talked about this last week and say, we're going to pay for your abortions. We're going to pay to get you out of state and pay for your abortions. Well, here in Kentucky, our state bank, uh, the bank we man, the bank we hold our funds at and, and cut checks from and everything else is JP Morgan Chase. One of these banks, they're doing it. And if we leave that bank, take our billions of dollars of your funds elsewhere, punishing them for saying they're going to fly Kentuckians out of state to be uh, murdered, unborn Kentuckians out of state to be murdered. If, if they're going to do that, then we can say, well, look, we're not going to bank with you. And how many other conservative states that hold any kind of money with them would go on that? How many, at, at all kinds of levels of government saying, look, we're not going to bank or offer tax subsidies, or we're not going to offer any kind of, uh, of, of incentive, in, in sense, um, incentives or subsidies, or even these, these loans, these non-repayable loans we make, like the $400 million one we did to Ford. You know, all these, all these loans and stuff, we say, look, if you are going to be transporting our citizens out of state to be murdered, we're not going to invest with you. We're not going to do it. And we're not going to invite you here. And we're not going to do business with you. And we're not going to keep our money with you for sure. Because our tax dollars cannot fund abortion. And that is a stand we can make at State Treasurer. So uh, I definitely need your guys' support. If you can, not if you can, I need you to. I need you to go to Andrew number four. KY.com. That's Andrew, the number four, KY.com. You can check out my platform there. Find out more about me, of course, as well. It gives you something to share to people. And most importantly, you can donate. So please donate. Andrew4KY.com. Give big, give often, give as much as you can. We're going to win this race. We have to, we must, we will. Andrew4KY.com. Go there, donate today. Donate right now. Give as much as you can. Thank you guys so much for for going there and doing that that helps that keeps us rolling tell your friends text your friend right now say hey check out this guy please donate to him andrew4ky.com if you like what i've been saying you want to see that happen let's do it for you guys who've listened to my podcast over the last uh years that we've had it and and obviously over the last several weeks we've been more regular thank you guys so much and and you can go back and listen to that and say that's exactly the kind of person we need influencing our government. That, that is exactly it. So please, Andrew, the number four, ky.com. So speaking of abortion, abortions continue in Kentucky despite trigger law. So uh, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, Kentucky several years ago had passed a trigger law um, that would say that if Roe v. Wade was overturned, that Kentucky would immediately ban abortion in the state. It was actually a bill that even some Democrats voted for. And so they voted yes to the the Roe v. Wade goes on and the trigger wall law goes into place. And immediately um, the uh, murder, I mean, abortion clinics come in and they decide they're going to sue um, to stop this law from taking place. And there's this judge, Mitch Perry, who somehow says that he finds in our state constitution uh, a right to an abortion, something we knew was coming. That's why... Um, a few years ago, two years ago, and or sorry, not 
two years ago, but in the general session, the, the general assembly session from 2021, um, a house bill was passed to put a constitutional amendment on our ballot. Uh, it'll be amendment two in November that if you, if it votes yes, would make um, abortion, not a constitutional right uh, that, that to reaffirm that nowhere in the Kentucky state constitution should a judge find a right to an abortion. Okay. So, because we knew this would happen. That's what they do with Roe v. Wade. They get activist judges to come in. They, they read something that doesn't mention abortion at all. And they somehow discover some way for them to bring it up. And, and look, and I said this earlier this week, um, you know, because people want to say, well, you're small government until it comes to abortion or women's bodies or whatever. No. See, this has nothing to do with governmental philosophy. For unless you are a, a complete anarchist, you do believe one of the few things government should do is not allow murder to take place. Like murder should be against the law. That's one of the few things that just about everybody, 99% of people should agree on is that government shouldn't allow murder, period. And, and you can go into all these whatever, but just, just we can agree there. So this has nothing to do with governmental philosophy. It has to do with the fact that I believe killing an unborn child is murder and you do not. And I feel bad. You know, I feel bad for all the kids that either have some sort of, uh, of maybe a, a mental uh, disability or kids that, that maybe are the product of rape or incest or, or these kids that um, just grew up in, in a poor home and, and they have to hear over and over and over again that if they were just dead, life would be better for their parents. That's what they have to hear. That's what they keep hearing. I mean, I read, I read some comments in an article today about how babies are just parasites and yada, 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 and how they, they, they influence your mind. And, and it just, it, it, it literally is completely evil. It's just from an evil standpoint of wanting to dehumanize children. So that way you're not worried about them. But, but my point is, is that this judge uh, decided to find um, a thing to somehow find some way that abortions aren't allowed by the Kentucky state constitution. You know, there's a lot of talk about impeaching this Mitch Perry judge, you know, some, some talk about getting him impeached. And I, I don't know, because if we remember judge Shepard in Franklin County, he came in and he full on stopped laws that were dutifully passed from becoming law. And he misused the courts and, and, and governments completely to the point that Kentucky state uh, Supreme court literally like admonished judge Shepard in their rulings on several cases where they're like, you are way overstepping your bounds. This is absolutely not allowed. You are completely incorrect. And, and the damages caused by this is huge. I mean, we're talking that because Shepard did not allow laws to become laws that he should have, because he overstepped his bounds as a judge because of that, more businesses went out of business, mandates continued, things were shut down, people lost jobs, people lost houses, people committed suicide, overdoses, everything else happened. And yet, there wasn't even a whisper of having him impeached. It was mentioned, I mentioned it. I said, look, you know, we can impeach Judge Shepard. And, and when the Supreme Court handed down a ruling that said Judge Shepard acted way outside the bounds of what he was supposed to, he should have been. That's not even me saying it as just a humble opinion from the street. That's not even a legislator. That is the highest court in our state saying that guy is acting wrong. He should be impeached. Didn't happen. And so there's some people talking about trying to impeach this judge up in Louisville. It may happen because at least it's politically. I don't know. I, I mean, maybe it's politically better off to impeach this judge for Republicans. I don't see how that's the case because, you know, at the time, especially Judge Shepard was was heavily disliked by a lot of people. And he was acting way outside the bounds of what he was supposed to. And they were getting a lot of heat because it because we we talked about how it made the General Assembly seem very weak, that they couldn't get laws in place. and They wouldn't hold this judge accountable. But yet but yet didn't happen. So I think it's a long shot that this Mitch Perry judge gets impeached, but you know, that's just what some of the chatter on the ground is, is that they're going to try to impeach this judge. But that besides the point, the appellate court upheld 
the restraining order. So I think it gets probably a little bit harder to claim he somehow needs to be impeached because they upheld this restraining order. And, and, and they're pretty much citing the fact that, you know, not that they think there's necessarily something there, there, but saying that, well, you know, as this course court, as it makes its way through the courts, this case does, if, if somehow you're ruled against the damages this creates is huge because it forces women to have kids that they didn't want, blah, 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 blah. They didn't want the kids. They shouldn't have engaged in, you know. But anyways, anyways, I digress and digress. But um, yeah, I don't think he gets impeached and, and we'll see how this plays out in the courts. Um, they're going to have a harder time, especially after November though. And it, it really puts a lot of emphasis on Amendment 2. It'll be Amendment 2 on your ballot in November, how important it is to vote yes on it. Um, because that puts this to an end. And you literally have the ability to stop murder in Kentucky just by voting yes on Amendment 2. And I think I think that's really, really important. So some states are sending out uh, inflation relief checks, including California, sending out uh, checks for $1,050. And they call this inflation relief checks slash tax rebates because we overtaxed you. Now, I talked about this during my... Uh, Senate election that when you when you give out a flat amount of money to everybody, regardless of how much they paid in to the state taxing system, and you're giving a flat amount back out, and, and it's not proportional to how much they paid in, this is just wealth redistribution. No surprise coming from a leftist state like California, but also it's like they don't even understand what causes inflation. It's, it's real simple. This is what causes inflation. Too many dollars chasing too few products. Too many dollars chasing too few products mixed with, and, 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 and you get a microcosm here when you have fuel prices, because of course the price of fuel affects the price of everything. But that's once again, too many dollars chasing too little fuel. So instead of, so they say, look, we, we took in too much money, so we're going to return this to you. Well, first off, if the government's taking in too much money, then they should just be taxing less. Because when the government takes your money, then says, oops, we took too much, and then gives it back to you, we actually lose around 20 to 30% of what they took in, in administrative fees to get that back out to you. So instead, if they never took too much to begin with, you would actually get 20 to 30% more than what you're getting when they're issuing you this refund if they actually changed their taxing policy so they weren't taking it. But also you're blowing this money back into the system. You shouldn't have taken the money in the first place. You're not relieving inflation. You're actually making it worse because you keep blowing money into the system. What you should be doing is saying, we're going to lower our overall taxes. So that way the cost for goods and products goes down. That's right. Because if you lower your taxes, your labor goes down. A lot of people don't realize this, but when your employer pays you 15 an hour and then they take out $4 an hour in taxes, the employer also matches that $4 an hour in taxes. So to that employer to pay you 15 an hour, it actually costs them somewhere around 18 to $20 an hour to pay you that money. Now, if you tax less, the costs go down. And that would actually help with inflation because it means costs are going down. But instead, they're going to do the opposite. And instead of just cutting taxes, they're going to send you it. They're going to give you your bread and circus. Here's a check for a thousand bucks. Forget the fact that we've destroyed your economy. It's a thousand dollars compared to when we took it from you, when we overtaxed you last year or two years ago, is now worth 10 to 15% less than it was when we took it from you. But besides that, here you go. Also, make sure you reelect us too, because we got you covered. Remember that time I got you that thousand bucks? Yeah, you know you wanna you wanna vote yes for me again. I had you. I got you covered that thousand fifty. Don't forget to vote yes for D now when you get into that ballot box. Preying on low information voters. Classic Democrat actions. Classic Democrat actions. But once again, this won't fix inflation. You're not relieving it. You're just making it worse. So 
Well, guys, that's what we have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Once again, please donate to the Treasures Campaign. Andrew, number four, ky.com. Tell other people about us. Tell other people about the podcast. Tell other people about the can see. Tell other people what's going on. Use your mouth. Use your phone. Text, call, whatever. That is the number one way we win. That is how we're going to beat them. Thank you guys so much for joining me.